So now we come to the portion where we share about what we've heard. It's always good to listen to our rabbi again. He may not be here, he's there, but his teachings are still with us. And uh, like Moshe Rabbeinu's teachings are with us. And, you know, as I get older, um, I think about the change of guard. I think about what legacy I'm leaving to my children, how they're going to continue without me on this planet. And um, I realize that there are things that I didn't learn growing up that I need to teach my children even now that they're older. And one is a sense of responsibility, responsibility toward each other in a community, in, a, in our family, um, to teach them that our yes needs to be yes, our no needs to be no. When we say we're going to do something, we need to do it. And that's not always easy. It's so easy to change our mind and to make excuses. We're really, really good at making excuses. Ah, someone else will do it. Ah, someone, uh, it's not my, it's, uh, it's no big deal. Someone else will, will show up if I'm not here. Um, I was speaking to a friend of mine uh, who is Israeli, and um, he was talking about the Sinat Chinam. That's what Rabbi was speaking about today, the free hatred in Israel and, and around the world. Um, and he asked the question, Rabbi asked the question, is the Torah in Israel today? And it's obvious that it's not. And there are, the enemy is coming against Israel again. As we speak, a friend, another Israeli friend of mine told me how her children are so afraid because they're told that in any minute they're going to have to run into bomb shelters because, again, the world is on the attack against Israel. And what can Israel do to change that? By turning back to the Torah. What can the world do? to turn away the, the wrath of God that's coming upon us in every way, to turn back to His Torah. He, he says that we have been given ears to hear, but we can't hear. We've given eyes to see, but we can't see. And I see that among so many of my friends who cannot say they cannot believe what's written in the Torah. And I pray that their eyes will be open the way our eyes have been open. We're a small community, but we're a remnant. And we've always been a remnant that's turned back to God. It's never been the majority. So we have a big responsibility here in our own little circle of influence, our circles of influence, that we can make a difference. He, God want, What does God want from us? to show justice, mercy, to help the widow, to help the orphan, to help those around us who are in need. It's not a huge thing to do. We can all do what we're asked, being asked to do. So Rabbi was saying, our responsibility, know we're a remnant, know that we need to be light to others and not teach a religion, but a relationship with our God. That's what he's asking from us. So it was a really wonderful message. Does anybody have anything to say about the message today? Well, I, I, I was thinking about um, the free hate and yesterday I, I, I was reading a new about how the Palestinians are, are uh, how do you say that in English? Uh, desenterrar. Uh, they are unburied. I don't know how to say that. They are taking the, the bodies that uh, are already buried. Uh, oh, they're taking them the from ground. the ground. They, the... Turn, they take them out from the ground right. to say, oh, these people were killed by the Israelites. And this is fake news. And, 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 and when I look at that, and I, when I hear the, the message today, uh, it came to my mind how, how we can lose 
our perspective of life with Sinankinam. I mean, uh, people is is losing the values, the respect for for dead bodies in this case, um, and and how they are right now uh, uh, throwing rockets to Israel uh, and Israel is under attack in this moment, um, and the war is not looking uh, really in an objective way. Okay, but. Um, it's just that it came to my mind uh, what the rabbi said. When we return to Torah, um, it, for example, the, if the Muslims or the Christians could see really the Torah and what is written, the God is not looking to convert. Torah is a hey, return to God. Then Israel wouldn't be attacked. That's it. The sad thing is that they're being held captive today by the religious people in Israel who are making new laws or constantly adding new rules and new regulations so that the people themselves are so fed up they're turning away from 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 God and it's that's that's one of the big problems the the Pharisees of old are still here it hasn't changed and that's that's causing uh big problems in Israel as well. Miriam, you were going to say something? Um, no, I'm thinking so many things. I, I'm, I'm just remembering, uh, I don't know exactly how this relates, but uh, okay, let me turn this on. I was listening to the radio this morning as I was slowly getting up, and uh, there were these uh, women uh, who are involved in sports. Uh, it was about women in sports, whatever. And they were talking about the whole transgender thing again. And one one woman who's very good in what the sport he does, but she ref refuses to wear like a pride t-shirt or anything like that. And the announcers were so appalled. They said, I don't understand like how anyone could do that. Like it's so almost hateful. Like the whole paradigm of the world is so fixed in a, in a terrible anti-God attitude that they can't even see that, that this is wrong. It's, it's not, you can give them the Torah to read, but they're, they're, they don't, if they're blind. So, so when we go to people, if they're not at all receptive, in a sense, what Yeshua said is right. You just wipe your feet. There are people who are receptive. Like we can't waste our time on people who are so fixed in their in their uh, perversion almost or their attitude about the world. And anyway, it just struck me as so amazing that these women who are good, you know, these announcers, these honest people of seems not far out crazy people who were aghast that somebody who wouldn't wear uh, a t-shirt or partake in anything to do with the pride thing, they thought that was so negative and uninclusive blah 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 and there's no way you can talk to people like that that's the paradigm of the world it's really scary yes hi bry do you have something you want to say yeah while you're doing the service that lady uh, opened the door call call me ugly i'm so ugly you know whatever it is stupid stuff like that in your apartment, uh, in your house. Door, open the door. You're ugly and whatever. Stuff so like what? That. What did you say? I didn't say anything to her. Good. And she doesn't remember the message I gave to Mark. I told Mark to tell her not to open my door. Don't bother me. Yeah. Well, maybe you need to lock it when you're uh, when you're on online. Anyway, you're not ugly. You're cute. So don't worry. And you have to realize, Brian, because she's not well also. It's yeah. not an excuse, but she really isn't well. Yes, you're living in a home with a lot of people who are not mentally well. So you, you have to understand and, be, and show them a different way. <clears throat> you, don't, you don't react in the same way to them. Mm. Well, it looks like if no one has anything else to say. Yes, Mauricio. Yeah, I would like uh, to add also 
and is the way that a transformation with God can lead you to be a better person. In this case, Moshe, remember that in Exodus, he said, oh, I cannot go before this, the, all these people because I cannot talk. Right. I, I, I have a, a heavy uh, tongue. Tongue. Uh, and now in, in this book, and in this book, the whole book, practically, he is talking. <laughs> So how, how he developed a gift from, from the creator, from a heavy tongue to a great, great speech. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah, it's true. God does change us. We just need to take a moment to take a look at, if we look back, that's the beautiful part of looking at the journeys of Israel and to compare it with our own journeys. You know, I've had many more journeys than most of the people here because of my age. And, um, and, you know, watching what Moses is doing and how he's writing down everything for the future generations, I was thinking of, of that myself. You know, I'm the, um, besides Mildred, I'm the oldest one here, but I've also been the administrator here. And I was like Joshua to Moses. With, with Rabbi Percy, I was always there. I was in all the meetings, you know, in the Messianic movement and uh, conferences. I've had many, many, many experiences in this community. And I said, well, what, le what legacy am I leaving? I need to prepare the next generation. So I've started to write a manual of instructions for the, how to run this congregation when I'm gone. And, you know, and if God wants it to continue, at least there'll be the book that somebody else can divide up and take responsibility for, for us to continue on. And um, this way we won't be left with uh, without a, the next... Uh, we don't know who our next leader will be. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know really anything, but we always need to be prepared. And I was thinking even that with my children. I, there, there were so many things that I didn't tell them growing up. So you as young parents have that opportunity. Take time. Talk to them. Give them the principles. You don't have to tell them exactly what you did or what you didn't do. But there's principles that, that they need to learn that if they, they say something to you, that they're going to do something and they don't do it, you have to hold them to account. If you say you're not go you're going to do something, you have to hold yourself to account. You know, by doing it, these are these are are very these things will hold them in good stead in the future. Um, and we don't realize the the impact of them, because I remember growing up thinking, ah, you know, ah, so what if I sign this contract? Ah, I can always get out of it. Ah, so what if I? If I sign the the ketubah, the the you know the agreement for marriage, ah, I could always get out of it. You know that those our yes needs to be yes and our no needs to be no. Oh my goodness, how how much we need to emphasize that. Um, you know, people focus on the things that Yeshua did, where they say he died for our sins, but they don't focus on his life. I don't focus on the things that he said. And he said, let your yes be yes. He, he, he said, feed the poor, take care of the orphan. He was speaking Torah. He wanted us to come back to Torah. And it's, they, they've made of him a caricature. Yes, uh, and also when Alejandro read the, the Torah portion, it came to my mind something very deep. Uh, because uh, on the verse 6, it says that uh, is God saying to Israel, hey, it's time to move. It's, you, you have been still too much time in this mountain forever, uh, and you need to move now. Uh, and it came to my mind that sometimes it, it, it was something like God telling me, hey, you need to move in some way of your of your life, you you have stayed too much in this moment. I don't know. Um, 
We get Sometimes, locked. Yeah. We get locked into our comfort yeah. zones. Yeah, and it's yeah. not only at the comfort zones. Sometimes we think we are moving, but we are not. Um, We're going we round moving. and round the mountain again. Yes. So, so uh, sometimes we need to move to conquer the land. Okay. And it, it, it was very interesting. Uh, birds, to me, I never really watched in the way today I, I saw it. What do you mean, Mauricio? You said today you saw it in a different way. You mean about staying in, in one place and not yeah. moving forward? Yeah, for example, um, sometimes, I, yes, I, I feel comfort. And sometimes I, I believe uh, I'm doing everything in, in a good way. Uh, and, 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 and sometimes I don't move because uh, I believe that this is the best way to do the things. But sometimes we need to reinvent, to, 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 to recreate myself, to say, oh, I, I, I've been doing this in this way so many times. Uh, so I have to to ask myself, it is not a better way to do it? I don't know. Yes. Right? Well, the Rabbi also always said to us to, say, to really, to say the words of, of, of King, I don't know if it was King David who wrote, wrote it, when we say, search me, O God, know my heart, try me and know my thoughts, and see if there is any wicked way within me and lead me into the way everlasting. We need to really pray that because we don't always see ourselves. Most of the time we don't. And most of the times the people that we, who are our best friends or with us don't always have the courage to tell us things about ourselves. So we have to pray that God will, will show us and that we won't be stubborn. We won't be like Pharaoh where we harden our hearts about something about ourselves and are willing to acknowledge, to admit, and to make the changes that are necessary. Because if we truly belong to God, He will put us in a situation where we have no other choice but to change. We have a friend in the hospital right now, and it's very sad because she was with us almost from the beginning in our congregation, and then she left. And she had some habits, very, very bad habits, that um, made her very sick. And now she's in a position where everything has been taken away from her, everything physical in her life. And even now, people can't, she's in the hospital, and people can't even go and visit her now because there's an outbreak of COVID again. So she's she has no TV. She has nothing she can look at or listen to except God. He's brought her to the point where she's naked before him. And we really need to pray that God will be able to reach because one of the things that was her motto, she always said, I will never surrender. And it's very dangerous to say that to God because he will put you in a position where if he wants you to go in a different direction, then something is going to happen in your life to move you in that direction. On that note, um, uh, I don't even know how to put into words, but exactly what you're talking about is what's happened to me in the last, let's say, almost two years. For so much of my life, I used to have this feeling that I don't even know how to explain it, but um, the question was, how am I going to get through the, the thing that's me that I can't get through? I don't even, it's not important that you know exactly what it is. It's so hard to explain. It's almost an intuition more than a, uh, anyway, I always said, how am I going to move to the next place? And it even manifested itself literally in that, how am I going to move? I can't move to another place. Anyway, all this to say, in the past two years, it's like I never knew how that would would resolve. And now I just look back and I say, I've been taken over that mountain. And I didn't realize it in the pain of this journey I've been on. But I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of going through that mountain that I never thought I could do. I never thought, I, I, I didn't know how it was going to happen. And now I'm, I'm, I know that God is, is, is 
taking me on this journey. And of course, I have to, we participate in this journey. We're not just the pawns in a, on a chess game, but it's just really uh, amazing. Yeah. You know, like, uh, it's to know that we are so limited in our ability. There's so many things that we just can't see until we can see. And then all of a sudden, like, I, there's things I've said to you, Miriam, over and over again. And then one day you'll just say, now I get what you were trying to say. That's why uh, uh, we can have all the things, the right things. I've heard for years, these are not new concepts, but it's how they become real in your life. And I, you know, for years I've known, you know, uh, take the next step, everything you could say. I said, okay, whatever that means. But inside me, it happens when it happens. And it's somehow a conjunction of your own will with the love and will of God. But it's just amazing that, you know, it really is a journey. Yeah, it is. It's a, it's a, it's a frightening journey because you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring yeah. at the same time as being very exciting because you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. That's That to me is... When I feel that, oh, nothing's happening, all of a sudden, something out of the blue happens. And it could be a very small thing, but it just lifts up your spirit. You know, ah, oh, God is here. He knows. He sees the way. He knows our journey. And that's the beautiful thing of knowing that we're not alone, knowing that he's walking through this. But that's where the joy comes. You yes. Know, the struggle is when you're... A, a kind of a personality like I am that's a bit hard-headed and and uh, but when you begin to see it in your own heart and your own life that's where the joy is exactly Miriam I like your picture of the mountain and somebody else talked about a mountain too um and that's how I feel about my loss like walking through grief feels like a mountain to me Caitlin went to camp last week and it was such a good program. I was so impressed with it. They, it was non-religious, but one of the big things they talked about was, you know, you students have inherent worth. And I thought, wow, that's so neat that they're talking about that. And then they taught them, you know, just a lot of tools to live their life and, um, just kind of live in that understanding that they have worth. And Isaac, what are you doing, buddy? No. Anyway, <laughs> buddy was gonna come say hi. Um, her impact statement at the end of the week that she shared in front of the parents, like for the presentation, she said, you know, the hardest part of my week physically was the hike. We had to climb this mountain and my pack was so heavy and it was just so hard. And some of the advice they gave us was talk to somebody so that it distracts you. And that actually helped a little bit. And I just had to keep reminding myself to keep putting one foot in front of the other. And then that taught me that, and these are Caitlin's words, that taught me that in my life, there's hard things and they feel like a mountain and sometimes I just want to quit, but I can do it. I can get through it if I just keep putting one foot in front of the other. And that was really helpful for me this past week. I've just had a really, really hard week. And some moments I just had to say, what is the next step? Like maybe it's just making my bed or splashing water on my face or pouring cereal for Isaac. Like it's literally one step at a time and this is the embroidery i'm working on right now can you see oh a mountain oh wow yeah wow. That's, that's beautiful beautiful i'm almost done yeah wow. and i remember a, a preacher or pastor who said you can't climb a smooth mountain yeah but you know what's it really i relate to also what you're saying holly is that on in my these past two years whatever I remember just saying when I felt like, a, uh, I don't know how to explain. We all have, a, anyway, I would say, you just need to go outside every day, even if it's just for 15, 20 minutes. Uh, you know, I didn't want to. I just forced myself uh, to just to do it. Sometimes just the act of doing. And then 
you know, people would say, give you cliches like, you know, get over it, the sun is shining, whatever, blah, 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 you're a believer, blah, 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 whatever it was they were saying. And part of me just said, okay, this is a mountain and I'm yeah. not going to, I'm just going to, this is sometimes messiness is a part of life, even in walking with God, messiness just is a part of life. And instead of, you know, all these cliches, when you're ready to receive them, you receive them. If you really are trying in your own little way, whether it's ironing some clothes or putting water on your face, whatever it is, if your will is to survive, you will survive. And I just kept telling myself, just go outside, Mir. I go outside and all the things that I usually love, the, the beautiful flowers, I, I didn't, they didn't mean anything to me, but I just went outside every day, every single day. Uh, when it was raining, I forced myself to get dressed and walk up and down the hallway of my apartment. But and, and then I said, stop saying things to yourself that you think you have to say. The mountain is a mountain. You know, I can't, oh, I'm a believer. Why am I feeling this? The, the guilt doesn't help. You know, you just have to sometimes move on in this journey and, and, and not give it cliches. There's no... Oh, go outside. Oh, the sun is shining. Miriam, you belong to God. Yes, that's true. But sometimes messiness will just pass. Messiness is messiness. I don't know if I'm putting it to words what I'm trying to explain, but it's really I, helpful. Sorry? What you're saying is helpful for me. Okay, good. Because yeah. I really feel that whenever, when your heart and will are there, even in the, in the pit of despair, remember Peggy, the book, the pit of despond and, and what's that the what's slough that? of the slough of despond the slough of despond the only thing he could do is raise his hand and let god pull him out yeah and i would just yeah. sometimes get up and say god have mercy on me and be with me i feel like i'm drowning and i cannot do anything and people are saying oh it's a sunny day get outside well um blood you're you this and i it didn't it was like throwing uh um you know, mud at a, or marshmallows used to be a saying, throwing marshmallows at a brick wall. That's, you know, <laughs> you, you, I just said, okay, I'm just going to get out and go for a walk. And I would sort of trudge along in my cloud, black cloud, looking at things and feeling in, in the pit of despond, what sloth of despond. And then they said, God, this is me right here. This is me. And that's all I can say to you. This is me. And I don't want to be in this, but this is me right now. And it's Juan a final, as they say in French. <laughs> it, it, but it's a blessing that you had while you're going through it, that you had the community and you had, you know, the knowledge that God was there with you even in the midst of it. Because when oh, yeah. I went, Thank when God. I went through it, and I was in the fog every single day and only wanting to die, I didn't have that understanding that God was there. And if, as I look back now, I realized how even the, well, that I didn't know, he was still there, right. pulling me out and guiding me on that part of the journey. Right. So, right. But it took me many more years to get over it because I just, he wasn't with me, so I thought. Right. No, yeah. I, but when, when, yeah, exactly. But I guess when I was in these pits of whatever this past two years. It feels like uh, hell. Well, it feels like hell. Yeah. And, and. It makes me understand, you know, when other people are going through this, I don't know, I, it, just to know that, 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 that there's a mountain, uh, uh, it's sometimes you just have to accept things are messy, but you will come through this. Yeah. That's all. And, and Mauricio, you were going to say something? Yes, I, I, I only want to say that uh, I really admire uh, everyone uh, because when when you are talking about these difficult times, uh, all have the, the the opportunity to 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 uh, shut your mouth, right? To close your mouth, and, and and it came to my mind because in this portion and today is nine of Ab. Yes. So. And, and this is very important because uh, when we commit the Shohara, because sometimes, I don't know, this happened to me, why God? And, and, and we start to, to talk too much. It, that's a problem. 
and there is a consequences that probably are eternal. So, and so I, I, I just love when, when I heard that you pray, that you ask to God, you, you talk to God, <laughs> instead to, to, to shout to God, to say, hey, to, 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 to make a claim, right, um, to God, and, and, and it's very important. Hey, Matthew, it's good to see you. Uh, hi, guys. Hi. hi. Hello, Holly and Matthew. We need to pray for uh, Brian, too, because he's going for some tests next week. And... Um, so we can pray that Brian is is okay. Uh, we continue praying for Mina, who's back home. Hi, Mina. Do you want to say hi? Hi, Mina. Hi, Mina. She's back home from the hospital, and she's she's uh, doing. Shabbat shalom. It's Mina. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Mina, very do you have anything? Power. Oh <laughs> my goodness! Very very powerful. Holly and Matthew and Peggy and. Miriam, everybody, you've, all of you give me a lot, personally a lot of strength. Um, God bless you all. Thank you. Mina has been a tremendous encouragement to me all these, these years and during the times that I've just wanted to throw in the towel and just quit. And Mina said, no, you're not quitting. And she's one who just has not quit. She's one who really understands the mountains that she had to climb in this in this life. And and even when uh, we all thought she was a goner, she's still here. Thank God. I call her Mrs. Rasputin. <laughs> Mrs. Rasputin, that's funny. <laughs> oh. Yes, Mina. Well, if nobody has anything else to add for today, we'll uh, we'll say Shabbat Shalom. Um, it's good to see everybody. It's good to know that we're part of something so much bigger than we can possibly imagine. We we all, we're such a small instrument in this huge orchestra that God is leading right now, and we're going to be watching some interesting things in the days ahead so i wish everybody a shabbat shalom let's keep shabbat praying shalom. for each other we all need prayer right now we all need to be held up and lifted up and and every day we get up and we give god thanks every night we go to sleep and we give god thanks for our lives Tom so Peggy. what Tom yes bro uh, just staying here what we're doing here we're, we're what call me back uh, the phone. Okay, I will. I wish you all Shabbat Shalom. Have a wonderful week. And God willing, God willing, we'll see you again next week. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.